Let's assume here that your camera club, if you're a member of one, has set a subject of a triptych. Now I've created a few templates here to help you get started and there's a link below where you can download them. They're free use and I've made them at 1920 pixels by 1080 which is 16:9 aspect ratio, perfect for camera club rules. The black shapes you can see on a white background are like placeholders for our images, but Photoshop's layers make this a pretty easy job to slot the images into place. If you have an interest in image presentation and the creation of these templates interest you, then look for a link below for a video that covers a process in a little more detail. What I'd like to do here from Bridge is to select the triptych artwork and the three images that I intend to use. I'm going to stay with the more traditional triptych, this one here. Holding the control key, I'm going to select three landscape images. They don't always fit perfectly into those shapes, but it's going to give me an opportunity, I think, to demonstrate how we can do that. Obviously, the portrait formats above would fit a lot easier. I'm going to hit the Enter key and open all of these into Photoshop. Now with the images open, we can only see the triptych, which you'll notice on the right hand side is made up of four layers. The background, which is 16.9 as I've said, and then the three shapes. But we do have the other images and we can see them in these tabs. So I need to drag and drop these into my growing artwork. I'm gonna click and drag out the tab to there, to there, just making a little stack of them to make it easy for myself. I've got the move tool from the top of the toolbox, so I'm gonna click into the first image, click drag and drop, and I can close this down. And the second one. And close that down, and the third. There we can see them all at the top of the layer stack. Let me turn off the top one and this one and we'll concentrate for a moment on this guy here. You can see with the move tool I can move him around but what we're going to do here is to drop this guy into the shape on the right hand side. So to do that we drag the layer down to sit immediately above that shape. There we can see it. Holding the Alt key Move the cursor between the two lines that between, or the line between the image and the shape and click. And you can see it's instantly wrapped into the shape. I can still click and move it and I also have the ability to resize it. Now to resize just one layer, we do that from the edit menu. Free transform, control T. There's the bounding box, so I can drag this down, put my cursor within the box and move the image about. There's a limit to how far I can go, of course, and there I've taken it just a little bit too far. And we can see the black top and bottom, so I'll increase that. Get the position right and hit the tick to commit that change. Now let's turn on the top layer and select it just for a moment. I just want to take a quick look at it because this guy is in a slightly different pose and I think it may be a bit of a stretch to get him into the center section, which is what I intend. So let me leave this guy for a moment and we'll select the other one. And what I'd like to do here, we could choose to have all of the surfers surfing in the same direction but there's going to be many triptychs where we may want to have this guy surfing the other way. Now we can do that because we've got our artwork in layers. Once again, we go to the edit menu, we can go to transform and we can flip it horizontally. But now we need to do exactly what we did before. We need to drag this down over the top of the shape that we want it to be dropped into and by chance, it's already there. So holding the Alt key, click on the line between the image and the shape, and there we have it wrapped. 
On this occasion, rather than go back to Edit Free Transform, Control T will bring up the bounding box. And I'm going to drag this down and see what sort of shape I need. Just to cover things. And I think that looks pretty good. Whatever we choose, let's hit the tick. So now we've just got the center one to do. So turning the center layer or the center image on and dragging it down above the shape we want to drop it into, I'll immediately go to the Alt key and drop it in. And we're going to resize this, but I think it's going to be a bit tricky. So Control T will bring up the free transform. I'm going to bring this down so I can see exactly what I've got here. So even if I get this as small as I possibly can, this guy is a bit tight in the frame. In an ideal world, I'd go away and find another image that maybe is better suited. But sometimes we can just bend the rules a little bit. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to distort this image just a little bit. Just a tiny amount. I don't want to go too far and make the guy look a bit weird. But there I think we would probably just about get away with that. Hit the tick and there's our triptych made. Now you should immediately save this as a Photoshop file. Changing the name away from what I've called it here, Triptych Camera Club number 2. Because Murphy's Law will dictate that tomorrow your eyes will fall upon an image which is far better suited to one of these shapes. And while it's in layers, you can swap it for another image dead easy. Now, once we have the image in layers, we could spend some time checking out what we could do with the background. Let me select the background, but I'm going to go over to my toolbox, pick up the eyedropper tool. Just using the point sample here, I'm going to sample a blue from the image on the right. You can see it has appeared as the foreground color in our color picker. So now either using shortcut keys or if we go back to the toolbox and select the paint bucket, I can adjust the color of the background should I need to. But of course now I've done that and assuming I'm happy with that, it would be nice if these images were picked out with a bit of a line, maybe even a drop shadow would look nice. So let's select the shape on the left and go down to the bottom effects. And I'm going to open up the blending options and I'll apply them from here. We've got lots of them, but all we want here is first a drop shadow that turns it on. Highlighting alongside it opens up the parameters so I can have my shadow coming to the right and down if I want to and I can make an adjustment here but we'll leave them at the moment. I can go to the stroke command and click to the right to open up the parameters and here on the inside of the edge, I like the inside because it leaves a nice crisp corner. Let's try three pixels. A nice black line with a delicate shadow and click OK. Now we don't have to do the same for all of the images and you'll notice that those effects remain live all of the time. So I'm going to hold my Alt key here and I'm going to drag the effects to the shape on the right and the middle. And there we have it. At any time I can double click the stroke and I can adjust it as many times as I wish. So saving this as a Photoshop file, but of course at some stage we would probably go to the top right of the layers or the layers menu at the top of the screen and choose flatten to finish. It's the same technique no matter what the shapes are, oblong, square or round. Here I've used just one image split across the three sections of the triptych. Don't forget those links below to the triptych shapes and also to a more detailed video if you'd like to learn how to create the shapes. But I'll see you next time.